Conversations, Conversations with, with S.D. SD Booker. Booker. I'm glad to be on your show. I'm excited to, to discuss some of these things. Right. Um, I'm excited as well. I'm uh, gracious and uh, humble that you took the time out of your day. I know you're busy to uh, speak with me and speak to the people. Now, just to give the people some background on how we met, uh, actually it was on my brother Soul Immortals channel. And uh, to you have, who have not heard of Soul Immortal, go check out that brother's channel. Very, very powerful brother. He's helped me uh, a lot in, uh, in tremendous ways. So yeah, definitely check out his channel. I can't remember what the topic was, but Soul had invited me onto his channel uh, for a discussion. And you were in the chat room. Uh, he elected you or promoted you uh, uh, to the, the main stage to uh, speak. And, you know, I was just taken aback, uh, as many were taken aback on your delivery, your stories, and uh, the impact it had on people just from uh, that small amount of time. Once I got off the call, you know, my wife was listening to the call. Uh, she was on the live listening. And she was impacted by you and what you had to say. And so you and I just started building a rapport from there. Uh, and, and here we are today. So I thank you. Yes, you're very welcome. I, I appreciate being on. I'm, I'm happy to share. I know I've had some unique experiences being in a culture within a culture, basically. Yeah. Right. I want to get into that. Um, can you give us a history of your background? Your, you know, where, where you come from and how you got to this point? Yeah, basically, I was born and grew up uh, Mennonite. And I know there's different types of Mennonites, but the one I was in was very, very conservative. Um, we really didn't do things outside of our group or very little. Um, it was a, it was a, you know, there were good things and there were things that weren't the greatest as far as, um, you know, community was, was important. And so you could trust, you, you just trusted everyone in the community. You knew that if somebody said they would do something, they would, um, you know, pretty, pretty much pretty honest people across the board. If, you know, somebody had a, a fire or something happened with their buildings, they'd show up and, and they'd all pitch together and we'd rebuild it. And, uh, you know, things like that. If, if, men had a work day somewhere, all the women would pull together, bring all the, you know, meal in and all that kind of stuff. We did a lot of stuff like that together. That was, that was very positive. Um, the downsides to a, a culture like that is that you're very, very controlled. You can't think outside the box, which is why I never really fit in <laughs> because right. I, I didn't uh, just accept everything that was told me. I always ask why. And that was a no, no, don't ask why. Well, right. it's just the way it is, I was told. But so, you know, it, it was interesting because I got into, um, from, from the time I was very young, I was interested in, in healing health. You know, why were so many people getting sick and dying at such a young age? I didn't think that was the way it should be. So I started on my own because it was literally forbidden in that group. You weren't supposed to do alternative healing. You weren't supposed to look into herbs and that stuff at that time. It was, it was no, no. So I had to go outside of that realm. I had to secretly do it to learn what I needed to learn because I felt in myself, it was very important to learn. So it's just, you know, long story short, it, I just didn't really fit in, but there, there's, there's some very good things, beings that you're not programmed from the outside world, but you're definitely programmed inside. If that makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Um, so, so, so in the home setting, and not all the homes were that way, but my home setting was very, very stable. Very good home setting. My mom and dad were married when they were 19 years old. Uh, they've been married 51 years. They're still best friends. Never, ever did I see them fight, argue, raise their voice. They were, they were just best friends. Wow. Um, so, you know, that's, that's probably more uncommon than what my parents, but I was fortunate enough to be in that type of a home. So um, my parents are both alive today and it's just, you know, it was, that was a, a very secure home setting. Right. So, you know, I really appreciate that part. Right. Now, as far as the Mennonite, is that a, I would say a subordinate or a leg of the Amish sector? 
No, they're separate. So, so what happened is there was a, a man that broke off of the Roman Catholic Church by the name of Menno Simons. And Menno Simons is basically where the name Mennonite came from. He, he, it was a Protestant group from the Catholic Church. Um, it was it totally kind of a totally different branch than Amish. They might, they might have some similar things, but there's a lot of not similarities with the way they do things. So I don't know. It's just a little bit of a different, a different type of a structure. Yeah, when it comes to uh, religion as a whole, um, I'm kind of uh, offset about it because I think religion causes more conflict or more confusion than clarity. I agree. Uh, I mean, I agree. There's been a lot of wars throughout history in the name of religion, uh, a lot of killings, murders uh, in the name of religion. Uh, and I don't think it's... For, as a whole, I don't think it's here what it was meant to be. I think religion was meant to uh, cause separation, but to separate the righteous from the unrighteous. But I think it's going deeper than that. Uh, we're separating on shallow things, uh, you know, just personal preference, uh, skin color, gender, uh, things like that. It has nothing to do with righteous or unrighteous. Uh, it has, you know, everything to do with something totally different than that. So are you against religion? Uh, I know you, um, I guess, defected from that uh, that sector, but are you against religion as a whole? Well, that's interesting. There's a saying, my favorite saying is, religion, that, religion is for those who are afraid of going to hell. Spirituality is for those who have already been there. Right. I, I Let agree that, with that sink in a minute. Yeah, I've I already been that. there. I mean, I could I could go through things in my life, and it's just like, even look at the word. Our words play so much. Re legion. Uh, just a minute. What did that say? Re legions. What are the legions? Okay. Uh oh. I don't know. <laughs> you know, the right. words sometimes can have hidden meanings, and so, yes. you know, spirituality is where we should be. Now I can say, you know, there might maybe people of very low vibration where at some point in time, religion is going to bring them up. And I believe it's all about, it's not like I'm against this or against that, or we need to stop that kind of judgmental. We have to see who, where people are and what, because it's like this. Um, for example, some of the drugs, the reason people take them is because literally their vibration is so low that it will raise their vibration to take a certain drug. Now, somebody that's on a high vibration, if they take that drug, it literally feels like you've gone to hell. Wow. Literally, that makes, that because of the vibration. It's all about, everything is energetic. It's all about our vibration. So, so religion will have its place with people that are on a lot lower vibration than that. Anything we can do to bring us a little step higher, a little step higher in our path is, is good for us but that right. doesn't mean it's good for somebody over here that's above that right and that's i feel like good. what people do is is they get to this point and they stay right here they plateau and they're not going to go any higher because they're letting religion keep them there religion should be used as a springboard to get you higher to spirituality that's just my my perception i agree i agree i've always said that you know earth is just a school uh, for learning and teaching and there's classes and so I think what we get caught up in the religion folk judging the spirituality folk and the spirituality folk judging the religion folk when neither one is right or wrong is just where they are right now in their life. Uh, and so, um, and, and, you know, the, the people who believe in spirituality don't have elevated graduated to spirituality. They got to be careful too, not to judge, like you said, or you may have to retake that class, you know? So yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Absolutely. that's something to be learned in that. Now, right now, what, what brought you to the point to the work you're doing right now? I know you're involved in a lot. I don't know if you can touch on everything, but what you can touch on, what you can speak on, what got you to that point? And can you speak on whatever you can speak on? Wow, that, that can be a long story, but um, I'll do my best to, you know, touch on it, but keep it short. Okay. Um, so at age 24, I had cancer and 
I'm telling you, I mean, cancer is an anxiety disease. We can get into all this kind of stuff because, you know, when you're suppressed, when your energy is not allowed to go out and do what it needs to do, which our souls, all I believe our souls bring whatever energy we need with us to accomplish. And when, it, okay, for example, being in that religion, I wasn't allowed to do the things that I know are my soul's mission because everything had to be done within that little circle. And you were very, very limited as to what you could do. Well, personally, I have a, a lot of energy. I have a lot of downloads. I have visions I have that, that are pouring into me all the time. And if you don't have an outlet for it, you get sick. So um, it, it was, it was, you know, a lot of kind of tough things, but um, I learned, and, and again, I was very um, chemical sensitive. So as far as going to the medical route, I couldn't even do that. That, that wasn't even an option because my body was chemical sensitive. I can't take anything like that, very sensitive. So um, I consulted with a natural practitioner, natural doctor. Um, she you know, did some protocols, things like that. She discovered in the blood work, she said my cells were the cells of an 80 year old at 24 years old. Wow. Okay, so, so that's, that's pretty drastic, right? right. So I, I'm starting to learn, I'm struggling. And four years later, I had a massive heart attack. At the age and of 20, uh, at, at that 20, point, 28, yeah. Right. Um, and it was it was pretty severe. Again, um, you know, I was in I was in when it happened. I had been sick so much prior to that that I was kind of in denial. I'm like, no, I'm doing my best. This can't be what it is. But my mother's there, and she's like, no, you no, this is. And I keep passing out, you know, and and having all this pain. And um, but but she knew. She was scared. She didn't know what to do, but she also knew it, me as her child that I couldn't go to the hospital because red dye was something that would kill me. And that's the first thing they do if you have a heart attack. So I said, no, mom, no, mom, just let me stay here. I'll be fine. And it was, <laughs> it was, it was something else, but I, I stayed there. I stayed there at home and uh, I was in and out of consciousness for two weeks. Um, but I did have, I did have some outside, you know, friend, natural doctors that had scanning machines that came in and scanned and test seen that the, you know, what exactly was going on with my heart. It was massive damage. So, um, but you know, I just was like, okay, everything we go through is for a reason and I'll get through this if I'm supposed to. And at the same time I was having, I mean, that experience was something that never, ever will go away from me because I was out of my body on the other side. And I seen things that you will not even believe one time we, we can actually do a whole show on that and i can tell you what i've seen and how it relates to where we are right now and on this planet but you know i don't know it, it's just i just have you know so many experiences that have led me up to here to where i was being persecuted in that group for one reason was that i wouldn't go to the medical field they would not hear they would not understand you know, even if my mother tried to tell him that, that she can't, you know, her, her vibration is not of such, it doesn't work. Mm. You know, my mom had tried different things. You know, as a child, I had a skull fracture. I was trampled by a cow. They thought I was dead at one year old. Um, oh. I had been in six car accidents. So I've been beat up. <laughs> and my mom realized at age 15 that she couldn't take me to the doctor anymore because it was just me. It was, it was taking me downhill. I would get violently sick. I couldn't take anything they'd give me. Wow. So, um, you know, thankfully my mother was, you know, aware enough that she realized that that was happening. Um, but I was being persecuted so much that there was almost no chance. I mean, within, it was six months after that heart attack that my husband at the time was in a head-on automobile collision and pronounced dead at the scene. Wow. But I had had, I had had a dream or a vision just the day before and I knew he wasn't, he was, he wasn't going to die, even though they said he was. So there, that was a story too, that we can go into. That was quite intense, but um, basically I went up there. They took him a long ways away and, um, you know, seen him come back mm -hmm. and feeling the energy that brought him back coming in through the crown of my head, going out my hands. I literally could feel it happen. So it, you know, there was a lot of things I had to learn experiences I had to go through to learn. I believe it's to learn how to 
use the energy that I was given, how to use the energy to heal, which is what I'm here for. Because the healing is what we need, mind, body, and spirit. So that's kind of what got me where I am. I, I um, you know, they were persecuting us. And finally, one morning, I just, I'm just like, I'm not, I can't go back. And that was hard because everything, my whole life, all my friends, all my family, everybody I knew was in there. I didn't know anybody outside. Wow. So when you think about this, stepping away, you have five little children and you're cast out. When you, when you leave your band, they, they ban you. They're supposed to treat you like you're dead. Wow. wow. So I'm telling you, it was, it was pretty drastic. So, so like I said, um, they say spirituality is for those who've already been to hell. That's just a teeny glimpse. There's a lot more. Wow. So, That's, yeah, I got a theory. Uh, just I derive from my own life and other lives I've watched. And listening to you, it brings me back to that theory I have. When you were going through all that stuff as a, as a child, uh, probably not then, of course, but looking back in hindsight, uh, going through all those those beatings and your body's been beat up and, and ridiculed, ostracized. Do you think those those times were preparing you for what you had to endure in the future? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. It's like spiritual weightlifting is what I say. Yeah. yeah I remember at age, I remember clearly at age 11, I loved, I loved nature. I lived in nature every minute I could by myself. I'd go alone. My dad had a uh, a farm where he had a woods I'd go back there and sit and I would just talk to my higher self I would just talk and and hear and listen and uh, I clearly remember one night I was out in the moonlight I was looking at the moon and I said you know and I just felt this thing unfolding inside of me for humanity for people I didn't know but for humanity in general and I remember saying out loud you know what I'll do whatever it takes. Just show me truth. Because I already knew at that age that the things I was seeing weren't truth. Wow. And there were years later when I was going through some of the roughest times, I would look back and think, remember myself saying that and think if I really knew what I had to go through, would have I still said that? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. You know? Yeah. Sometimes it's, it's, um, Sometimes well, they say ignorance is bliss. And so, yeah, sometimes we don't know what's ahead. And that's a good thing because we're, we're forced to not. It is, but go yeah, yeah, yeah. When I, when I remember that feeling in my soul, that unfolding of just, just opening myself up to the universe. When I said that, I still think I would have just because it's like when you come here for something and you start to feel into what it is you're here for, you're going to do whatever it takes. You literally are going to do whatever it takes to, to accomplish that because that's the challenge that your soul has set for yourself for spiritual growth, I believe. I, I believe that. I, I talk about this in A Toast to the Men, the book, that we all have a mission. We all have a purpose. And when we're, we're not aligned with our higher self and doing what we're supposed to be doing, it, it's going to eat at us. We won't get any yeah. rest. Uh, we won't have any peace. It's going to eat at us until we accomplish what we're supposed to accomplish. So I, I definitely believe that. Uh, yeah. I also think, you know, you don't graduate. You don't go, you may die physically, but you got to come back and redo that lesson until you pass it. Uh, yeah, I believe Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. And a lot of times being on your mission, it can actually come when you're not on your mission, it actually shows up in physical ailments, I believe, is what I've seen. Yeah. It'll actually show up as, you know, all kinds of things, it, you know, kind of depending on what it is that, um, you know, where it, where it stores in your body. And, and again, you know, it becomes an energy block or blockage to yourself for you accessing your own energies, you know, is what I believe. All right. Now, switching gears, I talk, well, I want to say I talk about this a lot, but I do uh, talk about the female and male dynamic. Mm -hmm. uh, of biology and history, science, uh, the the glory of that, uh, the complications, our confusion of it, the struggles, and most recently, maybe uh, maybe a few weeks ago, I touched on 
how the man and woman, the male and the female come together and can manifest. I compare the manifestation of ideals and thoughts uh, in the man and woman come together to them coming together and creating a child. And I actually got a lot of that information after speaking to you. Uh, you you uh, reinforced or confirmed some thoughts I had and actually gave me some clarity. And uh, I think I shouted you out in that video, I believe. But uh, can we can we go into that? Because I think that's the number one problem in the world is the male and the female, man and woman, coinciding, getting along, thriving together, uh, knowing our roles, accepting them, and, and uh, flourishing. Can can you get into that? I would absolutely love to. I couldn't agree with you more because. I believe, and I just shared this with somebody just, just about an hour ago that we were discussing, and I shared with them that I believe that until we fix the male-female dynamic, nothing else is going to correct on this planet. I believe it's the root of everything because it's the life, it's life itself. It's life force. And, and you know, through all these struggles, all these years of, you know, learning, going through stuff, one thing I found that never fails is nature. You can always look at nature and find a comparison. When you're looking for an answer on something that culturally or society is looking, you always go and look at nature. Nature doesn't lie. So when you look at the male-female dynamic in nature, it's very, very interesting. And there's a lot of different analogies you can find there because, for example, the earth is a female energy. The sun is a male energy. Yeah. So you see how the earth works. This, the earth needs the sun to wrap it, wrap her in its rays to shine on her before it can grow plants and, and greenery and anything. Yes. But the, the sun, if it was shining on an earth that didn't grow anything, what would be the use of the sun? All right. Yeah. So it's the same with the f female and male. I believe they need each other so badly. Because the female, the womb, is where all the life force energy on the planet is coming through. It's not coming from anywhere else. The womb is where it's connected to the universal power source. That's why every one of us can only enter the earth through the womb. Wow. Wow. So when you, when you look at the child in the womb, and I'm a midwife, so this is just fascinating to me. I love this. <laughs> but when you look at the child in the womb, every child that's conceived is a girl. Every child. It's not till a certain point in the pregnancy where if it's going to be a male, the testosterone comes in and destroys 50% of the, what they call the neurons in a certain area and replaces them with testosterone, which is a protective substance. So the neurons leaving 100% of them is the intuitive, but then when it's replaced with 50% of the testosterone, that's the protection. That's literally the protective force that protects the vulnerability of the neurons. So the soul, our soul comes in through the umbilical cord, every one of us. Solar plexus, look at your navels called the solar plexus because that's where your soul comes in. After you're an adult or any, after, after you're born, all energy comes in through your navel. That's why when something bad happens, you feel like you got punched in the gut. All the energy comes in that way. So, so, you know, you see a lot of things. You see, like you were saying, the dynamic. You see women saying, oh, men are just, oh, they're just no good. You know, they're this, they're that, they're the other thing. And then you hear men say, oh, women, they're just trying to steal your energy. They're trying, you know, all these, you know, all these scenarios. All right. But if we really, if, if we really understood what was happening, I think we could fix that because we need each other so bad. We couldn't have one without the other ever. Right. There's not going to be a woman on this earth without a man, or there's not going to be a man without a woman. So we better get our stuff together. <laughs> you right. know, right. <laughs> it's time. So, yeah. so when you look at it, the, and just, just speaking from a perspective of a, a feminine perspective, I feel, and, and again, I know that it's not the same for everybody because, you know, not everybody grew up in the same circumstances, but me being able to be out in nature as much as I was and connecting with nature, it kind of let the flow, it flow naturally, I believe, what, what, how it should, but 
but literally I'll feel energy 24 seven pulsing coming into my head and up through my feet at the same time. So you literally in your body feel this swirl of, of life force energy all the time. And for me, now I know, um, and okay, we'll get into this later. For me, if I can't do something to assist somebody, it builds up in my body and literally can make me sick. Wow, that's interesting. It's interesting because I touched that's on the, that. I, I call it, yep, yeah, I call that the force. There's nothing, no other word. And when you're birthing a child, which I've, I've birthed uh, 10 live and one that was stillborn, when you're birthing a child, it magnifies that force a thousand percent. You literally feel like the whole universe is coming through your body. Wow. wow. So that's the energy. Now, now, your energy can come out of your solar plexus as a positive spin going clockwise. Remember, clockwise spin of energy is always the healing energy. That's what a healthy cell has a, a, a clockwise spin. Now, the solar plexus is always going to be spinning one way or the other. When you have cancer or a disease of any kind, your cells go into a counterclockwise spin. The counterclockwise spin always sucks life force energy out of you. Now, you can compare this to the Earth. Look at the big vortexes. You know, Phoenix, Arizona is one of the biggest known uh, vortexes on the planet. Right. right. And that's because it has the, the clockwise spin. Now, when a dark energy takes over, any, any, any energy can be taken over by dark or light. The light is our natural state. But any, like, like for example, trauma, trauma to a small girl or somebody like that. So now this girl's always going to have that same life force energy pouring through her. Right. But the, the spin can be reversed. It took me a while to understand what was happening. Again, I had to go to nature and I had to look at the vortexes because what what they have found in science is that the vortexes you know naturally would have a clockwise healing spin but dark energies literally can take over those forces and and reverse the spin to counterclockwise and then that area becomes very poor very the people are sick things like that that's a counterclockwise spin wow and wow. so things like that happen you know there's 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 uh, realms that we don't see but they're still there. The, the Native American and different tribes, all the Native tribes around the world knew this. They would do regularly do rain dances and things like that. Their whole purpose was to get that energy to spin the clockwise way. So, so, you know, so, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. So, in, in, let, let's just say you have um, a female body now, which is the same as the earth. Now, now you literally can if if the energy is is spinning the way it's supposed to which is clockwise you literally as a man are a container for that energy it's coming outward you literally your job is to literally take that energy and direct it direct it in a positive way because i feel the energy all the time 24 7 but unless i have a male energy to bounce it off of I can't direct it properly. It's it's fragmented. The only way I can is if the, the only way I can. Now now you can because we both have male and female. But to what? do that, if you want to direct it, you literally have to go into your masculine energy, and then it's counterproductive because when you go into your masculine energy, at the same time you lose the intuition. So now now uh, you you know it can be destructive. It can be a destructive force. Right. I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like to have both, both the counterclockwise and the clockwise spin in your body. And and because when I had cancer, very obviously to have cancer, you have to have a counterclockwise spin. Wow. So when we hear, I know you've heard this before. Uh, you hear women saying they were the mother and the father of a of a child. It's just impossible. No. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I never hear so, men saying so, that. I, I never hear men saying I was the mother and the father. It's only, you know, some women that say that. But that's impossible because uh, there's a sacrifice. You're going to give up something. You're going give, to give up your femininity if you let too much masculine energy consume you. So the child's missing out on something. There's no way. There's no way you could be a father anyway as a mother. But you can't be a whole mother if you let too much masculinity come in. I agree. I totally agree. It's just like, 
Oh man, there's so many things you can compare it to, you know. Um, just like, for example, those those ones that say they're a mother and father. The thing is, is I can guarantee you, there's men around them in their lives, brothers, fathers, uncles, cousins, even coworkers, coaches. Yeah, you got to realize that we're you're you're, you're you got to realize that we're drawing. We are drawing on each other at all times with the need we, we need each other there's no way there's no completion without the balance of the male and female at all right you can't have you can't have one without the other right. how could you have if you plugged in your 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 electrical outlets wouldn't work if they didn't have the two sides of the you know the two sides the positive and negative they wouldn't you wouldn't have lights yeah. and it's yeah. the same with our society I and mean, we would have no light so i i i laugh and say if it was just women on the planet, we would totally burn it up because that energy would have no outlet. It would be wild. It would be like a forest fire. I agree. But if you had all men on the planet, it would become desolate. There would be no, there would be no light. It would just, it would just yeah. decay upon itself. <laughs> right, right. We, we need, yeah, we need one another. Yeah. We certainly need one another. I, I'll tell you something that's interesting. Um, and she's she's probably gonna listen to this, but I'm in business with a with a with a woman I grew up with, and uh, she identifies as a lesbian. And when she brought me on or asked me to come on on board, she she said uh, one of the things she said is that she needed some masculine energy, and I thought that was really profound that she will say that and notice that and recognize that she needs some masculine energy in her, in her, in her company. And I was thinking, wow, yeah. this is, this is amazing. When we have uh, women who, who say they're heterosexual that won't even open up and submit to that and say, I need masculine energy. Um, I thought that was just, that was, that was astounding to me, but Piggybacking off of that somewhat, when the earth is bruised, when a woman experiences trauma, experiences trauma, how can that be healed? You know, we, 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 we identify the woman as earth and the earth being bruised, her experiencing trauma. How can we get by that? How, how can she get past that? How can the man, the masculine energy, help her get past that? Well, there's a lot of things. I mean, a big one is is actually a, a woman that's been traumatized. One of the, I believe, one of the biggest things that she can do is to ground herself to the earth, put her bare feet on the ground. How many people are doing that? I can't even tell you enough. I'll just give you an example. So since they implemented this 5G two weeks ago, there's just been a horrendous amount of violence, of car accidents, of things like this, because what it's done is it's put a, a wrong spin. It's, it's people, especially that are close to the towers, it's actually put a, a reverse spin on things. I've got connections that have these meters they can hold in their hand that test the amount of voltage that's building up in their body. And that's, that's the negative buildup in their body. Um, and it's just massive. But one thing that they found is every time they can be holding this meter and it shows massive amounts, as soon as they take off their socks and shoes and stand on the earth, the, the needle goes to zero. Oh. So also I like to go back to uh, Revelations where it talks about you know the end of the time or the end of the age or whatever. And it says the beast, which is the dark energies, the beast threw a, a, a flood out of his mouth to destroy the woman and the oh. earth helped the woman and the earth swallowed up the flood. That's the exact scripture. Now the woman can mean not necessarily just female, but it can mean all the people. The woman is the intuitive, actually the, the female energy is love. Love is a female energy. That's why every child starts out as a female because they're created out of love itself, which is God. God is love. Source is love. So it starts as a female energy. But to protect that female energy, there has to be, the male counterpart has to come in as a protective force. 
because right. you know i think we talked one one other time about about a candle i can have a candle it's in a, in a nice little container and i light it and and i have this flame it's controlled it's this flame is burning i get warmth i get heat i get whatever but the instant if, if that container is tipped over that that fire is going to burn your whole house down Facts. that's the, that's the female energy it has to be it has to be contained we can't do it ourselves with if we're staying in our feminine we can't do it ourselves the only way we can do it is to move into the masculine and that's why you see when you move into your masculine it gets it gets really touchy because that's where you see really mean women i mean right. women that move into their masculine are a hundred times meaner than a man oh yeah because oh, no it's doubt. foreign it's foreign it's not their natural state so not only are they you know they're going against nature itself so that energy is still pouring through them because they have a womb but it becomes a destructive force no doubt no doubt yeah anytime i see a woman uh who is married or attached to a man and i see her being destructive causing mayhem being a menace uh, the gossip, just, just, I mean, going on a rampage of destruction. I know it might come off uh, misogynistic, but I always look at the man and say, "What, what's going on with you? What are you, what, what are you doing? If a, if a woman's attached to a man and he's not bringing uh, constraint order, like what's going on? I always hold the man accountable, you know? And uh, I think that's so important. We have to be honest with ourselves when women have to be honest with themselves and like, hey, if I'm not contained, if, if you know, I don't have boundaries, I can go out all off, you know, you know, the, the, the grid. And men have to know their yeah. purpose. Yeah, men have to know their purpose and, and not be afraid. Some men are afraid of women. They're afraid of yeah. containing women. It's that energy. They're afraid of the energy now. Yeah. I, I, I would differ on you, on one point with you. It's not the man's responsibility all the time. Let's say he gets with a woman that's been traumatized and her, her energy is literally spinning in reverse. Hmm. How is he going to contain it? Literally, it will take him to hell because it's going to suck. Now, now think about this. Think about a tornado. Think about a tornado. It's a sucking force. It literally sucks things up into it from, from where it's, you know, as it moves through an area pick up houses and everything sucks it into the vortex right now think about just a wind you know a, a straight wind blowing towards you or a sucking that that's what's happening so if, if a woman's force is correct it's going to blow that energy towards you you can contain it in a healthy way but now take a man trying to contain a woman who has the cyclonic energy that's uh sucking backwards that's going to drain his life force he will it will kill him but, but I'm telling you, I mean, it's just like, but doesn't a woman, that type of woman, doesn't she only act like that with a certain type of man? I've seen some that act like that no matter who they're with, honestly. I've, I've seen so many different things, but I've seen really good solid men and the woman flat out refuses to be contained no you're not going to contain me but again i think it goes back to to trauma where mm. she couldn't trust anybody to contain her mm. because there's a whole difference between contain and control right let's just go back to the 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 thing of a candle okay now you can have this container which is containing okay and you can move the candle around now now, if you if you get into the control aspect, you're going to cover the whole candle up. What happens? It goes out, right? There's no oxygen. Correct. So, so if a woman's been traumatized as a girl and she's been controlled, manipulated, uh, harassed, whatever it is, she looks at all things that even feel slightly like that as the control that's going to put her out. It's going to it's going to literally put out her life force. So you can see the trauma that causes that and the healing that needs to happen to, you know, get it right. There's, there's a lot of different things. There's a lot of, of practice, uh, you know, tapping. I love tapping the emotional freedom technique, EFT tapping. That helps a lot. Literally, there's a point on your upper or your arm right above your, you literally can feel in there and, and it's, it's tender and you start 
tapping, as you're feeling those emotions, you literally can start reversing it, even with things like that. There's a lot of things now available for us to help heal. Wow. So would you suggest uh, that a man stays away from this type of woman, not connect with her? Would you, would you suggest that until she does the healing she needs to do? Again, I don't think she can do it without a man of some type. Just, just from experience, knowing what it's like when you're sick, mm -hmm. when your energy is off, when you know you're traumatized, you still have to have, you still have to have it somewhere, and it doesn't have to be close. It can be your father, it can be your, you know, whoever you trust. Right. But I still think they have to have a male friend of some kind that they can trust that they can vent. And again, that's part of the feminine energy is venting. True. But when they vent, they need to feel that there's somebody solid, that it's not going to push them away. A lot of men, and I've seen this in my past, when you're going through a lot of grief and trauma and the, the pain and stuff is swirling through you and you vent, they're going to run away. Mm. They can't handle it. Right. So that's like, I, I say, it's like, we have this energy and we're, we're throwing it. We have to find a solid, we have to find something solid to toss it against that's going to sort it out. And, and send it back to us healed. I believe that a woman can throw you an energy. You literally can take it, sort it out and, and give it back to her healed. I believe that because I've seen that. So okay. now, now let's say you tried to do that with a weak man. You, but see, you that's what I was saying. Like that's, yeah. But, but you, see, that was, okay. that's, what, that's what I was saying. It takes a certain type of man. That's right. what I was saying. That was yeah. my point. It takes a certain type of man that can only do that. Um, You're right about that. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, because I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm 45, and I see, um, I see some things that men go through. I've heard things also that men go through with women. I'm talking about some crazy stuff. Um, I've never experienced. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, and I don't know. If these women are not drawn to me, we're not drawn to each other, or they just don't feel comfortable, compelled, being disrespectful, you know, to me. But I've never experienced a quarter of the stuff a lot of men have experienced that I've witnessed. Um, yeah, so I just think it takes a certain type of man to be able to deal with a traumatized woman. Yeah. You know, you're right. You're right. And and that's an interesting point. I, I love um, that, that point because when you actually look at it and I'm, I'm thinking about all Pat, back in my life, when, when you would, when you would be dealing with a weak man, it literally felt like you, when you would vent or you were trying to get clarity on something. And again, a lot of times when a woman vents, she's not wanting you to do something. She mm -hmm. simply needs you to bounce that energy back to her from a, a stable place. Um, right. So, but when you do it to a weak man, it literally feels like you're throwing something at a shower curtain. It's like, woof. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She, you know, yeah, but like, like my dad, for example, my dad was a solid man, solid wall. And, you know, growing up as a teenager, when your emotions and energies and everything's all like this, you know, there were times where I would just be distraught and, and, and he would just be there and he'd just be there and he'd just say, you know, no, I can't let you do that. It's destructive. And I do it. Be, I'm not letting you because I love you. And that that was that was like like a such a stable healing wall. Right. Wow. Yeah, that, that sound stable force is powerful. Now, to segue into that, this is perfect. Children talking about children. Man, this is a. Uh, uh, a, a topic close to my heart. Uh, I love children. I think we all can agree children are the foundation. They are the future, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, we got so much going on. I've been hearing about uh, kidnappings, uh, the police, CPS, I, I guess sometimes the feds with these uh, illegal, these yeah. uh, the kidnappings, illegal takings of kids. Uh, we got uh, child support issues. We got custody battles. Uh, we got the school system. Um, some believe they're creating a pipeline for kids to go to the penitentiary. Um, we got all these things going on with these susceptible 
uh, sponge-like beings that are taking in all this stuff. How can we derail where we, we're headed? What is it going to take to us derail uh, this dark path we're headed down to where we're corrupting the kids and, and we can turn this thing around? Well, when you really think about it, it's back to what we said in the beginning. When the male-female dynamic is correct, that stuff is going to stop because there's going to be a father and mother. And again, I, I've been uh, connected with some people that were pretty high up in some places. And they told me in some of the programs they've seen and uh, some of those entities, those ABC agencies, that they actually had programs to disempower the men because they felt like if they could take the men's power, the women and children would be an easy takeover. I believe it. So what are they doing? You wouldn't believe what the programming, what they said, one of the main programs was to do that. Take a guess what, what it was that, that, that they seen. To, to enforce that? To disempower the men. There was one program that was widespread that they did, they've done to disempower the men. Oh, I, I, several things come they, to mind. They, they implemented pornography. That was the number one program they had up there for disempowering the men. Because if they could get it like that, they could actually weaken their stability so that they couldn't protect the women. Wow. Wow. I when he told that. me that, I was like, are you serious? I said, really? He said, yeah. That's the, That was the whole point of it. Yeah. Yeah. Pornography is at an all-time high right now. The viewing of it is at an all-time high. Uh, you can easily get it too. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I remember when I was a child, we would hear about stuff and you might find things, uh, a magazine or stuff that my stepdad had. You might find things my brother hid, but it wasn't just easy access. And now, I mean, it's, it's just easily accessible. And I could definitely see that uh, weakening the man. You know, uh, I always say a man that can can control his sexual organ, his emotions, and his stomach will will be doomed for destruction. You know, um, so I could definitely see pornography being a, a weapon of destruction. I can see that. But yeah. it's a billion dollar industry, so and it's it's only growing. So, it, what's the motivation? To change, how do we? There is no motivation for the powers that be that are making all this money. So how do we? How do we change that though? Like, is that even possible? Hmm. That's a really interesting question. You hmm. know, I, the only thing I see, um, you know, I know people don't want this, but the only way I thing I see is a, a revolution. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I've, I've right. said this, but you can't have a revolution without blood being shed. Oh yes, you can. <laughs> How how's that? Explain that to him. I would love to hear that. You know, the revolution is going to be people like us right now getting on here and putting this out, putting our energies together to fight against it again. It would not take that many because positive energy is so many times more powerful than negative dark energy. You can't even compare the two. I would say it would only take a few people, a few men and women that get their power together to overthrow this. It does not have to be blood. No, it's an energetic thing. I believe it's an energetic war. It even says that in uh, Revelations, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. That's what we're fighting. There doesn't need to be blood. As above, so below. We have to look on that that level above and fight it with our energy. And, and as you said before, with the rise of pornography, you're going to see the fall of the powerful man. Yeah. Yeah. It's no Seriously, doubt. it's right. It's there. It's 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 all through there. So yeah. we are wrestling against you know principalities and stuff like that. This is not a physical war so much but it's 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 manifesting on the physical realm yes yeah yeah i mean and, and speaking on children i mean that's at all time high children viewing pornography i mean that's it's just it's I, out of control. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's free. Uh, it's on your phone. You got the walking around with the computer in your hand. It's just, it's, it's crazy. Um, so picture, picture this, just envision this with me for just a, just a minute. Okay. So picture that you start having, and it, it, they're going to be few at first, but you start having a, fa a strong family dynamics where the male and female are understanding the energy they're, they're She's bringing, channeling this energy. She's literally a channel. Um, and he's, he's the conductor, so to speak. I mean, you can even look at it like a motorboat. Look at the motorboat and you know it's got a lot of power with a big mo a big motor and uh uh maybe she's in that motorboat and she wants to throttle it all the way up and and i i felt that way so many times where there's so much energy i just wanted to throttle it all the way up but i had to keep it all the way the throttle all the way down low because i had no source to let it out to that could handle it so if she doesn't have somebody that knows how to to steer that motorboat it's just gonna go and wreck so let's just picture this. Let's just picture a few solid family dynamics that start to put out things. They start to maybe um, create uh, alternative school or alternative where they unschool those children. They're, they're working together to create these little organizations all over the place. You start taking back the children one at a time by bringing them in there so they're not going to be programmed. They're going to be connecting to nature. That's the number one thing. Maybe, you know, for schooling, instead of being in books, curriculums, they are going to be out. Maybe this one has a horse to take care of. Maybe this one is going to learn to, you know, do cob building. Cob building is the most fun thing you can do for children. And it's so easy. You know, things like this. We're going to just implement little things like this. These children are just having the time of their life they're expanding, their minds are growing, they're becoming who they really need to be. That's true education, who you really are. Whereas you go into these, these, these school systems, it's like taking this big soul and crushing it down into this little mold and forcing it in there. It kills the spirit. The spirit yeah. gets depressed. Yeah. And then think... what do they do? They put them on drugs. They say they have ADD and put them on drugs. Right. Right. Yeah. Speaking of the school system, education, children. Um, I think that I've been a, a proponent of that, that take for years that they're killing their spirit. They're, uh, the school system is killing their soul, their, their passions, their purpose. And, um, you know, I don't, there's no love. There's no love in the school system. Uh, there's no patience, no compassion, no understanding. And, mm -hmm. you know, I remember there was a time uh, kids look forward to going to school. Uh, but now kids don't want to go to school. Even at an early age, they don't want to go to school. Um, I'm involved with the nonprofit that I mentioned to you before, Destination Known. Mm -hmm. And we're about uh, being a third party liaison uh, between the students and the staff. Uh, teachers and principals, uh, principals in the board, and creating and delivering uh, alternative ways of getting through to the kids and alternative ways uh, for them to grow. Uh, so we have a few programs that, that help do that. But there's a lot of resistance uh, to change. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So do you think, and I've been thinking about this for a while, do you think more people or all people uh, need to practice homeschooling, and that's and that would be the way to fight back through homeschooling. You know, I've thought of that myself. You you make a really valid point. I've thought of that, and I've thought of how our our culture is and our society is, and how that you know half the time, more than half the time, both parents are working out. Yeah. Again, it gets back to if we could build the strong dynamic between the masculine and feminine, if the feminine was literally feeding the energy into that masculine the way she's supposed to be, and he's containing it and directing it, they could work out of their home and they could both be home with the children. It could be so powerful. I mean, there's unlimited business opportunities out of your home nowadays. Unlimited. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The potential is, is you can't even, it's, it's even, you can't even anywhere near tap it. But again, they would have to be on the same page and working as a team and dynamic. And then those children could be at home working with them. And I believe 
instead of homeschool, it should be unschool to where they're actually learning the family business. Yes, I agree. They're learning the family business, but at the same time, they're being able to be children. How many children are able to just run and play outside? How many children can ride their bike? I mean, I spent hours and hours and hours riding my bike as a child. Man, I would, you know, and just imagine you're doing this and, you right. know, it's just like, right. where is that? The, the creativity is missed, it's gone because they're not given room to be creative anymore. So, you know, I think that that's really where it's going to start again is, is building a strong dynamic, working together. Because again, if a man and woman are working together property, properly, there's unlimited energy. There's no oh. block. There's unlimited potential and energy for that family. Oh, yeah, I agree. And I, I think one of the reasons, you know, as people, we can make excuses and point fingers. But I think one of the major reasons um, the family is out of sync is because we don't want to sacrifice. Uh, yeah. As far as cost of living, uh, like we have to look at it like what's most important. Like, do I really need this five bedroom home or can I downsize to where, um, you know, my spouse doesn't have to work? or can work from home or maybe take less money doing something where she's at home, but we're comfortable and we're sacrificing for the, for the children. Absolutely. A lot, a lot of times we put ourselves in situations. We got, we got four cars, four vehicles, got a huge home. We got this other stuff going on. Both people have to work because of these things and the kids suffer. So I think it's right. about sacrificing. Yeah, I, I really do. I think it's about sacrificing. Yeah. Yeah, it, you know, you're right about that. That Those things become a burden. And it's like, um, I've lived in a tent with seven children. And that's the most fun thing I've ever done. We did it for a year and a half. No electricity, you know, just... I mean, it, it was it was just fun. We'd go down to the river and scrub our clothes on the on the rocks. And and I'm telling you, my children that they say from from I mean, all these years, they're saying that was the best time of their life. Wow. Wow. I believe so. That. Is it is it sacrifice or is it that we are not being creative? There you go. I mean, you can go look at this small house movement. I think it's the coolest thing there ever was. I do too. They're using yeah. shipping containers and making them into houses. And it's like, man, yeah. <laughs> you don't need all this money. You really don't. But, you and know. But so, you know, your children, if your children build with you, like, like when we lived up there, then we eventually cut trees off of our property, took them down to the um, next door neighbor who had a sawmill. He cut them into lumber. And us and the children built by hand a little geodesic dome. It was the, oh, it was so much fun, you know? Wow. And so, you know, doing things together, it's like, that's, that's an education that nothing can replace. At they all. need to feel like they're part of, they're part of the success. They're part of the family. That's what's going to build strong men and women. And today, those children, unschooled, never having curriculums, went out and took on the world and have their own successful you know businesses and they're all very successful it's like wow. you know they didn't need schooling they needed hands-on right i agree i agree i wish more people would do that now i'm gonna switch gears two or three gears this time okay uh, <laughs> and, and this wasn't part of the talking points but i wanted to touch on this just to get your, your take on it uh, my wife is big on this but uh, I don't know how you and I got on this topic, but Zodiac signs. And I think I mentioned it because something where we're talking about texting, I say, yeah, my, my, uh, my birthday is the, the way it falls is I'm a master teacher, the way it falls. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, wow, you are too, uh, because the way your birthday falls too. Uh, I've always been somewhat confused and conflicted with that because like I said, I was raised in the church um mm -hmm. and so uh they spoke against that right the zodiac yes, signs yes, they did. yeah but the older i got and the more i started reading uh the bible really doesn't speak against the zodiac signs the constellations actually the zodiac signs constellations coincide uh with the bible and mm -hmm. and and everything that happens uh around it uh from the beginning to the end. Um, 
can you bring some clarity to that? Uh, you know, I know I don't like the for people to lean on the zodiac signs too much, right? Because we all have free will and we still got to do the work. Uh, but I I just think it's a good framework uh, to, to bring. Uh, so you're not totally lost out there and you understand some things, but we still got to do the work. You still got to, you know, push forward. You still got to work on some things, correct some things. Right. And uh, yeah, you still got to push forward. So um, I don't know how, how deeply involved are you with the constellations and, and with the Bible and the Zodiac signs, but um, yeah, us being two master teachers, I don't think it's an accident. We're on here together. Right. I agree. Well, one of the things that's interesting, I know um, that I thought of this, you know, when my church was all against, you know, they, I know they're, they're all against that stuff. But, but in my mind, I'm not saying anything because I already knew that I'd get beat down if I said something so that you right. don't say something but, but my thought pattern was that okay, so we, we take the story of, of the birth of Jesus, for example, and the wise men from the east said they had been studying this, the stars for how many years and they knew this was going to happen. Where'd that come from? If that's right. so wrong, how come that? And they followed this star to find this, this child. And okay. And it's not the only place. There's other places where it talks about the stars and stuff in the Bible. So right. I, I believe, you know, the, the alignments of the stars, no, we don't need to put too much into them, but the alignments I believe are important in some, some points, some aspects. I'll just give you an example of something that's coming up that I believe is, is, you know, we can we can watch and we can both observe and see knowing this so every country in the world they incorporated themselves on a date where the planet pluto was aligning in such a way that they had ultimate power when they created that corporation wow so every 250 years approximately pluto returns again and you see a massive fall from power that was uh when Castro was, was killed, when the Iron Curtain fell, those were the dates that Pluto returned on that date. That was what happened in those countries. Well, for the United States, Pluto returns February 22 of 2022. And I believe it's uh, Jupiter and Mercury, or Mercury, I think, are both at 22 degrees alignment. So everybody around the world that even watches them are all watching us right now because they said it's it's United States time. There's going to be a massive fall from power um, around this time we're following. So there's events. There's definitely events that you can look at that point to it, that, that align with prophecy, whether it's the, the Mayan prophecies or the biblical prophecies. They all align with certain things. Yeah. I, I, agree. I agree. Even even what they what they used to call the Y two K, that was not according to the Mayan calendar and stuff. That was not uh, uh, the year two thousand. I believe that was starting like around two thousand twelve, maybe. It was the, you know the Roman calendar is different than like the Mayan calendars and the different ones, like by twelve years or something like that. Right. So there were there were events. There were things that happened. You know, and, and there's been shifts and, and a lot of things when you if you pay attention to some of the planetary alignments, what you're going to see basically is a shift in consciousness. Yes, it's happening. So so think about what's happening. We're getting you know, we're in February now. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it all around me where there's a shift in consciousness where people are waking up in mass. I mean, they're all of a sudden sitting here like what yeah. people you didn't expect to see ever question. Right. Yeah, I've never seen anything like this before. No, no. Yeah. yeah so, so, you know, it, it, I think they have yeah. a place. And as far as as far as working together with people, definitely certain signs work together better. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, yeah. you know, I have I've got three brothers, uh, Sagittarius, Scorpio and Cancer. Um, me and my cancer brother always, always work together. The others, they just did. We just, you know, it. And you see that through families, you can see, and, and the same with children, you know, you get, you, you, there's certain ones that the, the, I don't know what, it's just that they resonate more. Right. Yeah. There's certain ones that resonate more and then certain ones that, and, and it's like you, you can learn to resonate with everybody, but 
by nature, certain things, you know, certain alignments probably do strengthen that, make it easier. I agree. I don't know. Okay. What, what's your What's your thought? I, I want to hear what you think. I agree. I, I think you can't base everything on it, like you said, um, on, on the zodiac signs, but um, it does explain some things. Um, it um, it gives some clarity to why we do what we do, why we connect with certain people, um, why we can make things happen, you know, with certain people when aligned with certain people, why certain things are, you know, go down in, you know, destruction of fire when we're aligned with some yeah. people. Um, and even, even as, as so, as much so as when we plant ideas. Now we, we talked on this, but we touched on this a little bit, energy. Uh, I always believe, and I'm not the first to, to come up with this, that energy doesn't die. Um, it can be transformed or transmuted, but it doesn't die. You can't kill energy. Uh, can you can you speak on that? And and there's a word uh, that I heard of for the first time on a call you brought me on to, and that's biofeed, uh, biofeedback. A lot mm -hmm. of people, I'm sure, have not heard of that that term. Uh, what is biofeedback? Basically, biofeedback is where you're tap tapping into the quantum field. And again, like you were mentioning earlier on Immortal Minds, he talks about that a lot. He talks about uh, Neville Goddard and all that. All that what they were doing was tapping into the quantum field. That's called biofeedback. You literally tap into that field. You create things on that realm, on the quantum realm, and then they will manifest on this other realm. And so, like as we seen the other day, you know, there's certain equipment that they've developed. The the guy from NASA that developed the equipment that can speed that up but it has to work through you. It can't just do it by itself. It works through your spiritual connection. Wow. wow. So, so, you know, I don't know if that answered your question or, or at all, but, but uh, quantum quantum energy is very, very fascinating to me. I've worked with it quite a bit. So do you believe, and this is, this is something that crossed my mind the other day on that, that meeting, uh, that call, we spoke earlier about everybody being in, in, in a different class, having a different experience, a different stage in life. So is it possible for all of us to get to that point where we can experience that quantum leap, uh, that biofeedback? Or do we want to do that? That could be dangerous. Do we want to get to that point at all, all together? What do you mean? Like, how could it be dangerous? Or what, what are you talking about? Well, that could be that could be perceived dangerous for all of us to be aligned. Uh, but or to tap into that, be able to tap into that. But then you have, and I would think just because you're tapped in doesn't mean you're righteous or you have good intent. Someone gets gets a hold of that or, or elevates to that level with the wrong intent. I think that could be a dangerous thing. Which is probably what happened to our world, right? The analogy of Lucifer, I believe that's an analogy. Lucifer. Mm. That was an analogy of an inverted energy. But Lucifer took Lucifer is if you look up and I studied Hebrew for for years, I know that the, a lot of these words like, for example, the word salvation in Hebrew has a threefold meaning it means peace, health and prosperity that's what the word salvation means what everybody's looking for right right so you look at the term Lucifer Lucifer the term simply means an inversion of energy. A backward flow. Now, because Lucifer was powerful, it says right in the Bible, Lucifer fell from power. There's also a, a documentary on YouTube that is intriguing, and it talks about the Luciferian fall from power. It's called Sex, the Secret Gate to Eden. That mm. will blow your mind because it'll 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 clarify some of those those energies and how we can how the inverted energies are destructive. So when you say elevating to a certain level, you can't elevate with a certain i believe you can't elevate with a certain energy with a, a inverted energy 
you can go to hell, but you can't elevate. But now when you go to hell, you can take as many people around you to hell with you. Hmm. But as far as elevating, it would not be an elevated state. It would be a fall from the elevated state. If, if that makes well, any sense. That, that makes sense. Um, yeah, we, so I guess you're saying we're already, say we're already there. Mm -hmm. But to invert it, to make it all about us and to be unrighteous, that would be a fall. Yes. That would be a fall from grace. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because I mean, either you're going to lift people up around you or you're going to pull them down. There's no middle ground. There's yeah. no man that lives to himself or dies to himself. It's all going to be either you're being a positive influence and lifting others up or you're pulling them down whether you know it or not. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Now, another big, man, distraction, uh, conflict in this world, uh, particularly the, the U.S., I believe, uh, maybe the, even the U.K., well, I could say many places, but I live in the U.S., so we'll, we'll talk about the U.S., um, is race relations. Now, I personally believe this is one of the biggest hustles ever uh, to, to be displayed and exercise. And, you know, it's a shame we're still talking about race relations. Um, I think, I believe we're, uh, we're just spiritual beings, you know, uh, having a physical experience. And if you took these bodies away, most of us would not be in alignment or connect or hang with certain people we hang with. You know, we do it out of comfortability, uh, security, insecurity. Uh, and, and yeah, but man, we just looked at the spirit, the intent, the motivation of people, and we didn't have these bodies. Mm -hmm. We've been in different places. We would hang with different people. We would connect with different people. Uh, and so that's a beautiful thing. You and I have connected. I'm a so-called, you know, black male. You're a so-called uh, white female. And I say so-called just to keep it simple so everybody can understand. Uh, I'm not literally black. You're not literally white. Uh, right. But, right. <laughs> so um, I'm male, you're female. But we're bypassing that. Although we do recognize a masculine energy, your feminine energy but we're bypassing that for a common goal. That's a beautiful thing. And I asked one of the brothers in the power circle, but we were talking about this. And I said, this is cool when we could do this on an individual level. I said, but how do we attack this from a world level? And, and he said, well, you just got to focus on your home. You just got to focus on your circle. I do get that to an extent because uh, you can't look so far up the mountain. You, you'll be distracted and, and lose hope. Got to start at the bottom and, and work on it and work on it. Uh, as, as just you said with the children, um, you know, uh, one child at a time and you just work and work and work at it. Um, but maybe I'm impatient. But I'm like, man, this has to be a way we can wake up the masses. We can really wake up the masses as to far I just opposed to me just working on my small circle and hoping it branches mm -hmm. out and believing it's going to branch out. Mm -hmm. The word's going to branch out eventually. So I don't know what. I mean, we got a big stage. We got the Internet. So does it take this? Maybe we're doing it. Maybe I'm answering my own question. Maybe we're doing it. We're speaking to the masses on this on this session um but how do you feel about how race relations how we deal with that you know it's interesting and i hear you you're speaking from a master teacher perspective i feel the exact same way you're like your vision is different you see the whole picture and just like for example we're on the screen now what if you couldn't see us you could just see a white box and a black box Right. And our souls would be talking, our spirit would be talking, but you wouldn't see us. Right. Now is when you take away that part. Now you literally feel the spirit, don't you? 
You feel you the very no soul of the matter. You yes. feel the people, the individuals feeling because you're not looking at a body and judging by this or this or this. Right. So I learned something so interesting this last week. So here's my little, it's called tree of life. So just check this out, this tree. There's all these different colors. Here's different crystals for different things, right? So, so now let's look at this. The human race is a tree. Okay. Yes. So every color is a different race. Now we're all still part of the tree, aren't we? We are. We now, are. here's something that is absolutely intriguing. And I had never thought of it before, but I am just like, so I was working with this lady. Well, it's the uh, Teal Swan. She has a, a YouTube channel. Yeah, you mentioned her before. And, yeah. Yes. And she made this statement that just froze me. I was just like, okay. She said, I have never, she said, this is interesting. She said, I'm finding that the different races have different operate in different chakras like like this okay different colors right like this tree right, right. she said for example i've never interviewed a, a white person who has their root chakra open but almost all the black people do they're the okay now she's talking about our skin color reflects on the look at the chakras the one closest to the earth the root chakra is a darker color and as you go up and up and up now you get up to the chinese who have been into to spiritual practices and stuff for years and their skin yeah. is almost transparent now she i was just like oh my goodness each yeah. one of us is a different chakra each one of us actually the tree of life the whole tree of human uh you know of of the human uh race is all of us have are, are strengthening a different chakra we're actually strong in a different chakra wow so now if we come together now now look at this because this is the whole body. This is the whole tree. Cool. So if they can start, uh, you know, cutting at this branch and cutting at this branch and cutting at this branch, the poor tree is going to be just uh, dismembered. It's, it's going to not be healthy. And so that's what the divide and conquer. I think that's the whole thing with that divide and conquer is that they're going to separate us from us from each other. So we can't ping each other's uh, chakras. Does that make sense? <laughs> makes makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> makes a lot of sense. And actually, um, I've thought about this, and, and I'm glad you mentioned this because this this relates to culture, right? So I have this theory. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned the, the Chinese been been higher up on, on the chakra list, uh, or whatever our, our complexion is, you know. And I've always felt well, not always. Recently, I felt that. Culture is what you resonate with. It has nothing really to do with race. It's what you resonate mm -hmm. with. But mm -hmm. I could be a part of a few cultures. So, for instance, if um, if I'm in the banking industry as a black man, uh, I'm good at banking. This is my gift. Well, I'm an I'm an anomaly uh, for as banking. You know, we, we let's say the, mm -hmm. the 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 Jews master that. So that would be my culture. Yeah, that's not my race, but that would be my culture. Mm -hmm. Um, so I could be a part of different cultures. It's not like okay, I'm a part of one culture because I'm a black man. No, I can I can mix with different races who fit different cultures I relate to. And I don't think I don't think many of us look at it like that. It's like, OK, you're white, <laughs> you're black, you're Asian. You, you stick to this. You stick over here. And when you may be like, I mean. You know, and this, I'm joking, but you may be white. You'd be like, I, I don't like rice cakes, <laughs> you know, or I might be black. <laughs> I might be black. I'm black. I, say, I don't I don't eat chit I don't eat chitterlings. So why you why you want to you know why you want to push me over there you know, and and me and the wife was talking about this one time, and I was like you know what, I look at some people, some black people as a whole do resonate, uh, with the white community more, and some white people do resonate with the black community more. Is that wrong? That's a spiritual thing, I think though. Mm 
Yeah, so I really think I we got to yeah, we got to get past the color. Um you got to get past that color. And we got to really look deeper and say who are we spiritually? And who do I connect right. with culturally in different things, right? And I think that's holding us back big time because we're scared to step out. I agree. Or we're scared to let people in because they don't look like us. But if we look deeper, exactly, I could, I could yeah. not agree more. I could not yeah. agree more. Yeah, yeah. And that's I, that's been a pro. I believe that's been a whole a whole agenda of the Luciferian energy, if we want to call it that way. Um, was to to invert that to 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 divide and conquer to separate us all and it's just ridiculous when you really think about it and when you really if you really feel into your soul you know you've been here in multiple different colors and different races to experience it our soul comes here to experience what it wants to experience yeah. and it's like i've i've been on uh you know calls working in different areas and communities and stuff like that where you know, I'll literally hear, you know, people spitting out hate to somebody because of their skin color, one side or the other. And uh, I've been a target of that actually quite a few times. But I just think to myself, you know, you poor thing, you don't realize that next lifetime, you've got to come back in the one that you hated, because that's just how the dynamic works. I agree. So, I agree. I agree. That's how it works. Oh, you know, it's it's an, you, you have to experience it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's so powerful. You said that because I came to the realization through Brother Phil, you know, what karma really is. And it makes sense. You know, karma is not really a punishment. Mm -hmm. It's so we can experience what that person's feeling. Like we, we judge them. It's not to punish us. It's to so we can learn compassion. And so, right. yeah, so that's why I try not to. I really, I really focus on, I don't bat a thousand at it, but I really focus on not judging mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. things that, I can't really relate to because or not joking about it because I don't want to have to come back and learn that lesson. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't want to, I won't even joke about short people, you know, I'm, mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> okay, I'm, you don't I'm, want to be I, no, I don't want to, I don't have to come <laughs> okay, back and learn. Okay. I don't have to come back and learn that lesson. I, I, I can't relate to the short man oh, syndrome. Yeah. So, but it, <laughs> But if I'm making fun of them, I'm being judgmental, I'm being incompassionate, you know, I got to come back and experience that. Uh, I'm good. I, yeah, I don't, I don't want to take that class. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to love, I'm going to love everybody, try to love yeah. everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. And that's, that's how we should be. That's the balance of finding ourselves, you know, and I believe once we come to that is when, you know, our soul really will you know, elevate to what, what it is that we were wanting to do. We were hoping that we would do. I just, one little thing I'll touch on is when I had my death experience, one of the first things that happened when I, you know, was on the other side and, and, and immediately you can see everything, your whole life is in front of you. You, it's like, you, you can see past, present and future all at the same time. And I was disappointed. I was so disappointed. How wow. did I forget a mission this big? How did I forget it? And then I seen, and you know, the, the um, beings that were around me at the time kept telling me, don't, don't be so harsh on yourself. They would tell me that don't be so harsh on yourself. You forgot. And I'm wow. like, but how could I be so crazy? How could I be so stupid to forget something that huge? That's yeah. important. And you start to realize, and even my small children now, I'll ask them from time to time, do you remember what it was that you were coming here to do? And they'll think, and it gets them in a totally different mindset. They'll think, and, you know, I just want them to continually have that in the forefront of their mind as they're growing up. What are you here for? Don't forget. What is it? Only, you know, what is it? Don't forget what you came to do because you will be really disappointed in yourself because it's kind of like your soul sent, you came here to, to, um, you know, a test. You gave yourself a test. Okay, I'm going to go here and hopefully I pass this test because then I can elevate to the next level. Right. You come here, you totally forget. You're sucked in by all this matrix. You're this and that. And when you get to the other side, the disappointment is pretty bitter. I can, I can I'll never forget that feeling. But again, yeah. I, you know, I, I had a chance to come back and, and correct it, which I'm so grateful for. Yeah, you're, you're fortunate. And wow, I, I would be skeptical uh, about hearing that, but I've heard 
a couple of stories like that um, where people saw their lives flash before them and saw uh, the mistakes they made, the people they hurt, uh, the judging themselves and being too hard on themselves and and all what you, you just said. And uh, they came back, they had an opp- another opportunity to come back and uh, get back on course of their mission. And so that's a beautiful thing. It's like you were so set to go to school and take care of business, but you got mm-hmm. distracted. You got distracted with the frat parties. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Have you have you have you are you familiar with what's called the Akashic Records? No, I'm not. Oh, you might want to look into that. It's pretty cool. Um, so the Akashic Records, there's a record of everything, everything that's ever happened in every individual's life is recorded in what's called an Akashic Record, uh, Earth Records in in the in the quantum field, which makes wow. sense. Everything we do puts out a vibration of some type, so it's all recorded. You literally can tap your Akashic records. A, a death experience actually allows you to tap the Akashic records or even a near-death experience or an accident or anything like that actually allows you, and you can do it. There's practices you can do where you can learn to access your Akashic records. And it's very, very helpful for healing. Back to what you said about women that have been traumatized or, or men and either, you know, men, you know, that's something we didn't touch on back there, but a, a traumatized man is a whole different thing as far as being able to be the container he can be. That's that's a problem too. But let's just say anybody that's been traumatized, learning to tap into the Akashic records and see on the quantum field is something that we have the ability to do. All of us have our third eye. The pineal gland is the most powerful thing in the universe. There's no transmitter that, that there is that they've ever been able to make that comes anywhere close to the power of the third eye. Wow. Literally, they've done studies where they're attacking, they're, they're, they do, they, they hook these people up so they can read their signals and they'll, they'll have people like totally on opposite sides of the world. And they'll, they'll, I can't remember how they're doing it, but somehow all of a sudden they see these people's, these, it's cool because you can see the video, they'll have them recorded live on other sides of the world. And all of a sudden all their actions start to sink. Like this one puts their hand up. They put their hand up at the same time. They and, and it shows how that the brain can sync with somebody else on the other side of the world and how that nobody is living to themselves. Not even one thought we have is our own. That wow. thought that you put out in the Akashic field goes to everybody in the whole universe, not limited to the earth. Wow. wow. So, so when you see that, the implications of how we live are so huge how important it is for us to have that kind of healing positive energy that we're meant to have rather than a destructive negative you know depressed type of luciferian energy i would call it that way but but that's the the hardest thing to do is fight against that when it's pushing you down i know from experience when i had cancer literally you feel this force pushing you down 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 like you're you're struggling you're fighting you're doing all you can to push it off to to raise up and there's times where you just feel like, you know, it's a losing battle, but you can't give up. Right. And you will, you will eventually, because again, positive energy is so many times more powerful than the negative force. You can't even compare it. Yeah. One man, one, one, one man and one woman, just one couple that's on the same, no matter what the relationship is, that's on the same, um, that can sink themselves to that energy and move it forward. They can overthrow hundreds of thousands of people that are negative. I'm telling you. Oh, I believe that. Just by putting it out in the Akashic records, the others will start to change, just like that experiment called the hundredth monkey effect. Have you seen that? Yes, I have. I'm telling you. Yeah. We have so much power, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I uh and, and we'll we'll wrap up on that note. Um My hope is for the woman and the man to know the true power, uh, manage our egos, come together for the greater good, and uh, think about the children, the offspring. But we have to think about something bigger than ourselves. It's like, Mm -hmm. we're so important, but then we're so unimportant at the same time because there's something so much bigger than us. But- What we're tasked to do makes us so important, but others are tasked also. And so 
we're just one piece in this full body. Yeah. So uh, would you like to, we want to do this. I don't know. I might break the segment. I'm going to definitely break the segment up uh, in a, quite a few segments, but uh, we hope to come together uh, quite often. You know, you and I will talk about this off, off camera and uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what, what the people react reaction is um but do you want to close out with yeah anything? well this is you know you know well i would just say i agree with you this is the beginning of our revolution that you spoke about let's just do it let's i'm do it. i mean i feel like i feel like it's the i honestly feel like it's the most important thing on our planet right now is this revolution to bring bring the uh masculine and feminine energies to where they understand and flow together because again it's the basis of life itself. How are we going to fix anything else on the planet without fixing this first? I believe it's the foundation. We can try to build, but if it's a broken foundation, it's not going to build. Our building is going to fall. 